lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. I hope you can see me today. Um, the sun is, uh, I don't know what time of day I normally record, but the sun is directly behind me. So um, it looks okay on the screen, but I hope it's okay in person. I never really know. Um, look at these beautiful flowers, look at these. Um, my mother-in-law very kindly brought those around for me today, um, locally grown from a garden. I just absolutely adore dahlias. Um, never been lucky enough to grow any. Um, I, yeah, not. I do actually really love gardening, but um, I haven't. I haven't done it. So, but look at those, aren't they stunning? So thank you, um, thank you, Grandma, for those. Um, a view of my lovely new table. And um, today, um, I'm going to take you through what I've been sowing so far this month. And I always use that term month as in a rolling month. Um, yeah, not, not in October, not in September, but you know, a, a month. And you know, I thought to myself I hadn't sown very much because I've got a lot going on, as we all have. And actually, then I look at the pile and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been quite busy. And I've done some different things this month, which I'm going to show you as well. So let's get to it. Um, yeah, so today, um, this is what I'm wearing. It's one of the things I've made in the past month because I've joined the Zadie Club. Um, I, I thought I was the only person that hadn't made a Zadie in the world. Um, as you know, I'm a Felicity Fabrics blogger. Um, I'm very grateful to be that. And we have this lovely WhatsApp group. Um, and I asked the girls on there, and I said, um, I, I said to them, you know, uh, has anyone got any recommendations for the Zadie? I know I'm the only person, um, I think I started it by saying, I know I'm the only person left in the world who hasn't made one. Um, and then it only came back and said, actually, I haven't made one. Actually, I haven't made one, but I'm really interested to see how it turns out, etc., etc. Um, and the reason I was asking the question is because I understand the Zadie, or I could see from the instructions that the Zadie has an enormous amount of ease in it. Um, and the ease comes from when you've got your body measurements and the finished measurements. Um, sometimes you have a negative ease when you're making um, jersey products and that's because, um, so I've got a whippet that wants to come in, um, got the jersey products they have negative ease because they're going to be um, tight fitting against your body and the fabric will actually do the rest of the work. Whereas the Zadie is, um, doesn't have a ne negative ease, it has a lot of positive ease. Um, and the difference in sizes was enormous. So I did, you know, I googled it and asked the general public at large, if you like, um, including the girls from Felicity Fabrics, um, what their view was. And actually, lots of people said they made the Zadie two sizes smaller um, than they would have done, um, which is what I did too. So I would have traditionally cut out a size 14, um, and I actually made a size 10. I haven't been a size 10 in anything for well, for a very long time, <laughs> not since my wedding day, I shouldn't think. Um, sorry if you can hear like whippet paws and things as usual, they're, they're running around, skipping about and things. So here is the Zadie. Um, this is a wonderful crepe fabric that I got from the Textile Centre. I'll put a link to the Textile Centre. I'm certain you all know of, of them, but I absolutely love these, um, uh, the crepe the crepe fabric that they, uh, I can buy from there. It's such good value and I love the colours. Um, so they've got a black background. If I stand up actually, you'll see. So it's this traditional Zadie. I didn't make any adjustments to it. It's just so colourful and it is a black background. So I'm very much hoping that I'm going to be able to wear this with a polo neck, which is why I did the short sleeved. Um, it's meant to be ankle length, I think. I think it's slightly longer than that. Um, but I think it'll still look all right with little ankle boots and things for the winter um, because yeah it's a, it's a difficult thing isn't it this time of year you still want to have bright things in your wardrobe and make lovely things when I cut this out it was 27 degrees but this week it's as if uh, it's as if autumn came and got itself in a, in a big hurry um, but I absolutely love this I'll pop some footage here um, of me prancing around as ever um, but it's just so comfortable and I can honestly say um, or can honestly see why people love the Zadie now and um, if you've been watching my channel for a while thank you um, but you'll know I also have the beach bazaar beach pyjamas um, pattern by now and then and they're actually incredibly similar. Hang on a sec, let me grab the patterns and I will show you. 
Here we go. So I'll put the stock photo of the Zaidi up here because I never print off um, my instructions and things. It's a PDF. So let me put the picture of the Zaidi up here. And then this is the Now and Then Beach Pyjamas. Um, now, this I've made this and I absolutely adore it. The comparisons, I'd say, the trousers, uh, the trousers on this one are a lot wider and they're also full length. Um, but the construction across the top is actually very, very similar, um, except you make, I'm pretty sure this has uh, shop for bias binding, whereas this one has a self, self-made self bias binding on it, although you could do that with this as well. Um, I think the ties on this are also made from the bias binding as well. So they are subtly different, but actually the premise of it is the same, but um, they are different, um, obviously. Um, do I have a favourite? Um, uh, no, I don't at this stage because they are both do different things, I think, slightly. Um, but I have absolutely loved the Zadie. Um, I saw on Instagram actually that it was the Zadie Appreciation Day, I think it was called. Um, I think that was in the week because uh, a, a company in Australia, I believe, has completely stolen the design of the Zadie jumpsuit and sold it as a ready to wear. I think that's the story. Um, and yeah, rightly so. Um, the sewing community came together and sort of said, no, that's not how we should do things around here. So Zadie absolutely loved it. So why did it take me so long to join the Zadie club? <laughs> Look at this glow of sunshine here. I, I do hope you can see me okay. Um, I really don't want to not film just because it's so sunny. Um, I'm really, uh, Maybe it's winter, maybe that's why, yeah, autumn, maybe that's why the sun is in a different place today. But anyway, um, why did I suddenly join the Zadie club now? Well, I get asked um, quite often, would I make something for somebody, um, you know, a friend or relative, etc. And um, I most often say no. Um, then I thought to myself, why do I say no? What is it that's doing that? And it, it comes from the sort of the inner perfectionist, I suppose, um, that wants to make sure, you know, that it's absolutely spot on. And me maids aren't shop brought. They don't have that, um, I don't have that same finish, um, but and I guess for me, for me, I make stuff for me, so I don't mind what the innards look like. Um, I just moved my camera around a little bit um, because the sun actually is absolutely delicious, but um, you really can't see me at all, I don't think. Um, so I've just tweaked it a little bit. You do get a full glamorous view of my very much falling apart um, mannequin. I call her Safi. Um, she's very much seen better days, um, yeah, absolutely falling apart. She was um, uh, she was new to me, but not new to life when I when I bought her um, from the Friday ad um, many moons ago. So I'm sorry that that's. Oh no, I'm not sorry. She's seen a life. She's been she's been well used, um, <laughs> but she gets hot in here, so her her felt is coming off, and she's all a bit like this, which is quite funny because actually I have scoliosis and. Um, my back also does this, and my daughter says she's a really true replica of me. <laughs> anyway, I digress, sorry. Um, so Zadie Jump, uh, say Zadie Jump? Zadie Group, why did I join it so late? Um, uh, well, I wanted to make something for a friend because she has very kindly asked me a number of times. And each time I've said no because of my own insecurities, I suppose, about the quality of my sewing. And just thought, I just thought to myself, no, you should reach out to a friend. Um, you know, why not um, do something like that for someone? Um, and so I did. I, I chose to make her a AD jumpsuit. She'd seen me in the beach pyjamas at a party um, when we could party um, a few months ago and um, uh, yeah she saw, saw the beach pyjamas and said she'd really like something like that um, and I knew the Zadie was slightly more day wear because it's slimmer legs etc so I decided to go for the Zadie made myself this as a toile really of the uh, of the pattern and I have made her a Zadie so let me show you that I hope you can hear me all right. It's a classic Saturday afternoon here at the moment. And I've got um, my husband watching telly, I've got Whippets running around, and I've also got my daughter upstairs with her best friend and they are giggling like mad. But anyway, here is the Zadie I have made. Um, 
It's in this beautiful green crepe again from the textile center. Um, so here we go. You can see it there. Um, I really, yeah, I love this fabric actually. I'm coming a little bit, a little bit closer and see, see there there's the, you can see there's the um, bias binding and so on. And I have tried to make it as neat as I possibly can on the inside and out. Um, and as I show this to you, I'm going to step back again. As I show this to you, she hasn't actually seen this yet. She's seen a picture of it, but she's not tried it on or anything. Um, so wish me luck with that. Um, it's been a lovely thing to do to make something for someone else. I've only actually ever made a blouse for someone. Um, and that was as a birthday present. Um, but yeah, let me sit back down and I'll explain how I did, went about it. So I decided um, that I would tell Kerry about the Textile Centre um, website um, so that she could choose her own fabric and I gave some recommendations of the sort of fabric that, um, uh, that would be suitable and um, she went on then and uh, sent me some pictures of a couple. Um, that was one, uh, I think she sent me another one similar to this I think. Um, and then I told her the fabric requirements she would need. I had obviously measured her um, so they get the size and so on. Um, so I thought that was a really good way of doing it because then, you know, I sent her the picture of the Sadie jumpsuit which she really liked. Um, she'd chosen her fabric. So we're onto a win-win situation there. Let's just hope it fits. Um, yeah, I'm quite nervous about it. And as I say, as I'm filming this, she hasn't seen it yet or tried it on or anything. So wish me luck with that, fingers crossed. So that was um, the first make of the month and then um, if you remember a few videos ago I took you through um, some, some fabric choices um, that, I, that I had um, and my continuing love, I'm going to reach over here because on my, on my ironing board is the things I want to show you. So I've been making um, the Alba Textiles Staley Top. Um, which is a top and a t-shirt, um, you get two parts and you wear them individually but then they're designed to be worn together. I'll pop a stock photo in here of the pattern itself and also some footage of me um, wearing them because I'm not going to change today. But I made it in this um, lovely faux angora um, uh, fabric. Um, this is from TGF um, Fabrics, if, I, if I've got the details of that wrong I apologise, I'll put the details on the screen. I'll also link to them below because they've got some lovely, lovely fabrics. And this is a lovely sort of mint mint green colour. Um, and then the t-shirt that I made to go underneath is in the grey cotton, um, which is this one here. Um, now I don't think cotton jersey is the right choice for this t-shirt. I'm a bit cross with myself really because it's the second time I've made the t-shirt and the second time I've made it in cotton jersey. I don't think it's got quite enough stretch for the, for the neckband. So the neckband doesn't sit, doesn't sit quite flat enough when I'm wearing it. It's sort of, you can see here, it sort of puckers. So I either need to change it to a fabric that's got more stretch stretch, sorry, which I think I will, um, or slightly elongate the, the neck band because I had the same issue on my first one. But I love it, I wear it, I've worn it quite a lot actually, it's just come out, I've just, I don't iron anything as you know, but I do have to iron this because it's cotton jersey, so again, my, my mistake. But I absolutely love these two and this fabric is absolutely lovely. Now I made some amendments to this one. Um, because the actual Staley top itself has a slit at the side because it's got a high, if I show you here, it's got a high low, um, you can't really see that very well, it's got a, um, a higher front um, and a lower back which enables the curve of the t-shirt to pop out underneath and at the sides it's meant to have splits at the sides which is a really nice feature. It's also um, got a pattern piece that is the, the band the hem band um, which you fold under to create um, a nice hem band but I don't know if it's on this fabric or whether I overstretched it or something like that I'm not sure but I didn't like the overall finish of the split at the sides it kept sort of kicking out so in the end I actually um, sewed the sides side seams split seam is a little thread there uh, I sewed them shut so it's actually um, as you can see there it's just a complete jumper I also didn't, I didn't even dwell on doing the hem band at the bottom and I simply turned it up, I used a fusible um, interfacing tape from Prim and used that as a guide to fold up the edge and then just um, top stitch. 
Um, and this that on this particular fabric, that's yeah, that's given me a really nice finish, a really crisp, clean finish. Um, and this just looks really nice with jeans um, on its own, um, or with the t-shirt, which it's designed to do and to buy, designed to be worn with. Um, and I think I've got some footage which I want to share with you on that. So that's these two. That's the Staley top and t-shirt, which I absolutely love. So very lucky, very wearable. Um, as I'm, you know, I'm working in um, working retail. I don't know if I've seen that, but said that before. And it's quite a physical job. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly you know, moving around and things. Um, it's a smart, casual look, um, and um, yeah, I, I need to be warm as well because I'm bringing deliveries in and things. Um, the last two things I've made, um, I have actually done a full video on, so I'll link to that above. That was my last week's video. Um, and uh, that's for the Dawn Jeans and uh, the Melio shirt um, by Deer and Doe. So Dawn Jeans by Megan Nielsen, um, Melio shirt um, by uh, Deer and Doe. Um, and I made the, the Melio shirt, um, I have actually just ironed this, so it's frustrating, that's <laughs> frustrating that that's creased that like that already. Um, but I absolutely love this fabric. Um, this fabric's quite kindly gifted to me by Felicity Fabrics in exchange for a, for a vlog. Um, I love the detail on this. Um, I won't talk any more about it today um, because I have got the full video for you to, to read through. But making the cuffs, the collar, um, the hidden button plackets, absolute treats all round. Um, just superb, yeah, hidden bucket, button placket there. Um, I did have some beautiful buttons that I got from a local haberdashery. You can just see them there, but sadly they're too thick for the bottom hidden button placket. So I ended up just sewing some standard clear buttons on instead. And that's actually really nice because it lets the, the fabric do all the talking. So I'm absolutely super, super pleased with that one. Um, and I'm really, it really looks very, very, very shop bought. Um, and then these are the Dawn jeans. Um, in this beautiful pink cord um, and this pink cord um, was kindly gifted to me um, by Dragonfly Fabrics. Uh, it's a stretch, uh, a stretch needle cord um, and yeah just in this beautiful dusky pink. I uh, put some sort of, sort of dark brass buttons on there. Yeah full, full jeans construction um, with uh, the, the yoke and the, the coin pocket etc. Um, and I have yet to wear these out actually, haven't had a chance to wear these yet, um, but absolutely love them and again I'll put some footage of me walking around in these here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed those, uh, those few bits and pieces. The last couple of things I made um, are actually a completely different departure um, away from dressmaking and into some different things altogether. So I'm going to, um, going to trans, I don't know, Put a video in here, I can't remember what you call it, transition <laughs> into a different video and show you the last two things that I've been up to so far this month. Back in a sec. Okay, so here we are. This is um, one of the projects I got up to and I've also done a full video on this which I'll link to um, in the description or I'll put a card up in the top. But I, um, I did some renovation work on this telephone table. It was mahogany. Um, which was the sort of traditional wood that was used at the time and I bought this from a, um, a local charity shop and just absolutely loved the style lines of this. You can see Molly's Doyle's house sitting um, sitting um, behind it and actually that's my sewing machine cover uh, on the floor there. But um, yeah, I then made this seat cushion um, just using a, a square, of, um, square of foam from... Uh, from Dunelm Mill um, and also that fabric there is also from Dunelm Mill as well but yeah I just really really love the style lines of this and it's a very very cute table um, so it's just empty inside but I painted it um, and I painted it using Annie Sloan chalk paint which requires no prepping um, a squirrel just outside look <laughs> you can just see him on the <laughs> See him on the um, ground down there. Uh, we've got lots and lots of acorns in our garden because of the um, the oak trees, and the squirrels are having a mighty old time. But um, yeah, so I um, use Zanny Sloan. It requires no sanding, no priming, or anything like that. You just clean off the product and then paint, which I thoroughly enjoyed doing. And I used a wax product. 
Um, but whilst we're showing you this fabric, let me show you what else I made using this fabric. There's no glamorous angle to show you my um, the position of my ironing board, but I made an ironing board cover. Um, this was totally inspired by um, Jane from Loopy Mabel's Closet. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, then please do, and I will definitely link to her channel below. Um, I absolutely loved making this ironing board cover. Now that's a statement I never thought I would say. Um, it's incredibly simple to do. Um, and I will put a picture in actually um, of, of me doing it. Um, you basically lay, lay the ironing board on, on the piece of fabric. I just cut around it, giving myself a healthy seam allowance. And then I attached a bias binding um, to the edge of the um, ironing board um, and made a channel um, out of that and then used elastic to give it its, um, make it fit. So it's slight, slightly stretchy if you can see that there. Um, but I'm super pleased with that. Um, now I know you can buy ironing board covers for no money. In fact, I sell them at my shop for four pounds. But um, look at this fabric, it's beautiful. Um, and it wasn't hugely expensive um, from Dunnell Mill. And I just think that's the sort of color scheme I would like to go for in my new sewing room. So I thought, what better way to um, to start that scheme off? Um, haven't even moved into the house yet, don't even know when I'm moving yet. But you've got to start somewhere, and that's what I got up to. I hope you enjoyed that little view of everything I've been up to so far this month. Just a sort of quite an eclectic mix of things, really. Um, you know, twirling a product for a friend, um, which I'm really pleased with, and I very much hope she likes. Um, making some very practical workwear, um, which also transitions into um, leisure wear as well. Oh, making jeans I just love, and a shirt that is so intricate. And then finally doing some upcycling um, and giving furniture new life, um, which I think is great fun. And also my ironing board, giving that some love. You know, um, the ironing board uh, was one of the first things I bought when I moved out of home, um, which was a really long time ago, I can tell you. So, um, what, yeah, what a lovely thing to keep it going and not just ditch it and get another one just because it's in some life. Um, the last thing I want to share with you was um, a gift I got in the post. Um, and I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Caroline and Fliss. Caroline and Fliss are the owners of Felicity Fabrics who look after us so well. Um, and they sent me a little thimble. Um, now this is the Prim thimble um, and a lovely little card uh, that says, uh, Hi Cara, hope we're well. We've just become stockists for Prim and wanted to send you a little gift um, and they this week had a, a giveaway. So apologies you've missed the giveaway. Actually it would have been a couple of weeks by the time this video goes live. But this, this thimble is absolutely delicious and you know they actually call it something lovely. What do they call it? They call it a finger hut. It's not a thimble at all. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. This is from their love, the Prim Love collection, um, and it's just beauty as well as um, yeah, the beauty and form come together in the Prim range for sure. So if you do need any sewing accessories, etc., um, Caroline Fliss haven't asked me to say this, but such a lovely gesture shouldn't go unnoted, I don't think. Um, so thank you, you guys, um, and please do check out um, pr uh, the Prim section on the Felicity Fabrics website because it just went live um, just a couple of days ago. Um, so that's it from to me today. Um, yes, yeah, been great to spend some time with you. Um, coming up next is um, what next? So what next? Uh, I've got, still got lots of plans in my head, um, as, as I'm sure you all have, of things we want to make and do. And I've actually got a number of projects cut out just behind me there, so I'm going to talk you through those. Um, Please do subscribe to my channel, absolutely love having you here um, and there are ways you can support my channel. Um, love it if you could buy me a coffee, um, it really does go straight into, back into um, the investment of this channel which I'm hugely grateful to you all for um, and please do check out the other videos that I've done um, just yeah, if, if you've missed out on those. So until next time please stay safe and well um, and take care everybody, bye bye.